Hiya, welcome to another impromptu bedroom guru. The reason I'm doing this is because I've had many messages, many messages um, from people who are suffering with severe depression. Um, and a lot of people have been asking me how I do it, how I get through it. And I know that I've covered, you know, like the physical things um, and some mental things that you can do um, to get you through a day, but it appears that Perhaps I need to go a bit deeper into your mind um, for the people that have got more severe depression. Obviously, um, if your depression is becoming to an extent where you're getting suicidal thoughts and um, you really can't go on, you need to go and see a GP. There is nothing wrong with taking antidepressants, okay? It's not like the old ones where you're like a complete zombie all the time. There are different types for all different types of people and they can help you work. Sorry, they can help you. See, I've got brain fog, but I'm still doing this because there's so many messages of people that are so desperate. And, if, you know, if I can lay in bed and talk about it, I will. <clears throat> so there are many different types, SSRIs, SNRIs. There's all different types for what will suit you. You might have to go through a couple. They take a couple of weeks to kick in, um, but you will generally get a feeling of being able to cope more. Um, I have to take them for um, nerve and pain relief. The only thing that I hate about them is that they are so hard to get off of and I'm going to try and get off of them after I move um, to see how I get on because um, LDN, the stuff I'm taking, is actually um, helping that pain. So I want to see if I can try and get off them. Anyway, enough of that. You are laying in bed, um, you hate the world, you don't want to get out of bed, you're quilting it, which is what I call it, where the quilt is the cover that protects you from people, situations, having to cope with life, having to deal with the world because everything's collapsed in around you and you don't know how to go on, you don't know how to do it. Basically, either you just want to roll up and forget that everything's happening, sleep, because hopefully there might be a nice dream in it that will take you from the escape of the misery that you're in. Um, or waiting to die sometimes. This sounds like a really morbid video, but do you know what? This is what people are thinking and feeling. I'm telling you that now. But they don't like to tell people because then they worry that you know they're gonna be around them and that's the one thing you don't want. See, this is a problem. You want support, you want people around you, but you don't want them interfering because you're depressed. So even to just know they're in another room is enough. To not interfere with you or tell you what you should be doing or you know trying to get you out of bed or get you out of the house as long as you can just hear them in another room and they're not interacting with you that's enough so there's a little point for people that are dealing with people that are suffering with depression um, or grieving um, just to hear that there's a human being that if you did feel like you wanted a cup of tea could make it make the tea and go back out again that's all we need just company someone you know just to know that someone's there but not into in interfere if you're in a stage where you're either on your own um, or you have you know you haven't got a spouse or family living with you and you're on your own then it's down to your mind to work out how you're going to spend your day now with depression obviously comes fatigue um, pain in your joints lack of interest lack of luster um, you really don't want to do anything at all the actual um, one of the most least symptoms is crying because it just you know it affects your body and your mind more than it does just sitting there crying um, if anything, that's a release and uh, the fact that you are actually getting out of depression. Um, <clears throat> but apart from the crying, let it happen. You know, if you're just going to sit there crying all day, just let it happen, get it all out. Um, the way that I cope, like for instance today, <clears throat> it's a beautiful, beautiful sunny day out there. I'm completely exhausted and I suppose I'm a bit peed off because I want to be out there digging my plants and... You know, generally doing what normal people do, but I can't. So I could sit here and think, well, this is shit. I'm sitting here, can't do anything, can't get out there. My body's hurting, my lungs are hurting today. Every time I breathe, they must go away at some point. So I could sit here and allow my mind. Do you remember when I mentioned before to go into emotion and behaviour? But I'm not going to do that. So this is just little tips to help you when you don't want to do or can't do anything at all, okay? So what I did was I woke up, 
and realised how much pain and how exhausted I was and realised it was going to be a dud day. However, what I did was I did my three things to be grateful for. Well, I know it's really hard when you have had enough of the world, but do it, even if it's grateful that you woke up. You know, just do it. Grateful that you, you've got a roof over your head. Grateful that there's food in the cupboard, okay? Just find three things to be grateful for. It works, trust me. Then plan, and don't overstep this one, plan to do something for yourself and a practical thing in the day. It does not matter if you don't make it and don't do any of it. So my plan was, on a physical um, challenge, was to put some washing in and get it out in the garden for the first time so it can dry in you know, fresh air. And I've managed to achieve that, but it's put me back in bed. <laughs> the stamina of this body is just amazing. And then I thought, what am I going to do to be kind to myself, right? And I thought, right, my plan is, at some point, I'm going to have an Epsom salt and Damask rose bath, which will help with pain. It will help with um, mind, mood. It's, a you know, an antioxidant. And it also, magnesium is excellent for people that suffer with chronic pain and exhaustion. So laying in a magnesium bath is fab so I'm planning to do that whether I get there or not doesn't matter the fact is is that I'm doing something about self-care self-love that's it and then in between it I'm thinking what can I do now so I look at my limits again if you are just laying there and you don't want to do anything perhaps just have some music on that you like in the background because it will still continue to, you know, create a positive vibration, even though you don't want that positive vibration. You so, you so totally don't want it. But put some music on, or put one of your old films on you love, or watch comedy programmes, all right? You might resent it to begin with. It's really not good watching, like, romantic love stories, or, you know, where everything's fluffy and great and wonderful. Watch something that makes you laugh, um, because inadvertently you will end up laughing. And you know what I also watch as well on a bad day? Right, I watch something like DIY SOS, Big Build. <laughs> I know that you end up crying at most of them, well I do, but it's a sense of humility, it's a sense of community, it's a sense that people are sacrificing themselves for others and that gives me a feel good factor. Do you see where I'm going with this? So anything, you know, if you love nature, chuck nature on in the background, even if you don't wanna watch it or you don't, or you can't watch it, have it on in the background because even though you just said enough and you don't want to interact and you don't want to know it's passing subliminal messages of things that you really do like you know when you're not depressed it's passing on vibes that your body goes oh I actually like that and your soul likes it you know and your subconscious likes it but you hate everything at the moment and you find and you feel hopeless um so have things on in the background that will subliminally do that you know if you're physically up for it, you know, aim for something a bit bigger, perhaps, you know, if you've got a dog, take the dog for a walk in nature. Being in nature is so going to fuel you up with positive energy, even if you're feeling crap. So don't push it. Don't say, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I've got to do this. I've literally given myself one physical task, <clears throat> putting the washing out, and one self-love task, which is to have a bath, okay? And then, as I say, I just fill in the gaps in between. If you can aim to do that every day, and I know it's a tough ask when you've got severe depression, believe me, but if you can just do those, that, those two things, as well as the three things you're grateful for when you wake up, you're laughing. You know, if you're starting to get problems with food, like you're eating um, on emotion or drinking on emotion, then there are obviously support agencies that can help you with that if it gets out of control. But for God's sake, if you want to have a bar of chocolate, don't beat yourself up. Do you know what I mean? Think, oh, I'm going to get fat. Just have it. Just have it and move on. You know, perhaps you weren't supposed to have it. You've had it, so move on from it. Don't beat yourself up because the other thing is, is that we tend to go into um, a delicious descent into self-hate and, you know, um, self-loathing and that you feel useless and that nobody likes you, nobody wants you. That's where you've got to stop. Remember the CBT stuff I told you about yesterday? Changing your mind, changing your focus. Stop that thought as much as you can. I know that you want to really, really 
oh, sit and bathe in all that self-loathing and all that, you know, misery of what's happened to you or the fact that someone's passed. But all you're really doing is just putting yourself through more hurt that nobody wants to see. Um, obviously, it's a given. <clears throat> if you can, reach out to people. You know, if you've got family that keep um, wanting to help, give them boundaries. Tell them, look, I really want you here, but can you just be in the kitchen or can you just go and watch a film in the lounge just so I can hear you here? Tell them what you need and want, okay? Establish boundaries for your recovery. Tell them, I don't really want you here, but I do. So just don't interfere or I really need to talk now or don't say anything to me unless I say something to you. Establish your rules with them because they really do want to help. You know, it's breaking their hearts, seeing you unreachable. So try and reach them with that. As I said yesterday as well, what I do as well is I get on Facebook um, and perhaps support groups for what you're going through, whatever the reason is for your depression. Find people that totally get it. The worst thing you've, that you can go through is people saying, oh, I know how you feel when they haven't got a bloody clue. You need to find like-minded people that are going through the same experiences. Um, so find people that support you um, or you can just have a chat and a laugh with, you know. Just, you can do a lot laying in bed <laughs> nowadays. That sounded dodgy. Um, you know, your mind is the biggest um, catalyst to, it, to what sort of day you're going to have. And I don't know if this is going to help anybody, but I totally, totally get where you're at. I can't possibly imagine how tough it is for you as an individual with whatever you're going through. But I've literally had so many emails and messages today of people saying I'm fighting depression and I just wanted to add this little bit. I might be just be repeating myself, but do you know what? It's also added now to my feel-good um, list of, of what I've managed to do when I can't really move about today. Um, so, yeah, so if I go to bed tonight, I look back on what I've done um, and I look at the positives. I don't beat myself up for what I didn't achieve and I look at everything I've managed to do. Um, I look at everybody that I've connected with and either helped or um, people that um, are my friends that I've just said hello to and that's it, you know. And again, please, can I just say this as well, don't feel guilty about not picking the phone up, right? If, you, if you've got the right people around you, they'll get it. I'm quite happy to text away to people some days, quite happy to message them and email them. But if they phone me, sometimes I don't want to talk to them. It's not because I don't want to talk to them. It's because my brain cannot handle listening to what they've got to say, preparing what I've got to say back and saying it back. It's exhausting. And my friends who um, understand this um, get it. So they don't keep, you know, phoning and phoning again. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? They get it that I cannot have a conversation. This is easy because it's one way. But to take on someone else's words and emotion, think about what you're going to say back and then say it, it's really hard for people with ME and fibromyalgia sometimes on days when you're feeling weak. Um, and so it's exactly the same as people with depression. You're feeling weak, you're feeling vulnerable. Explain, get your boundaries sorted with people and explain. Stop phoning me every five minutes. I'll phone you when I'm ready. I prefer texts or I prefer emails or just need to be left alone until I reach out, but I appreciate it. Obviously, you know, if you leave it for days, then I don't blame anybody that's going to phone. Um, but a little text just to say, I'm fine, thank you so much, would be great. Okay, these are just little tips that I'm trying to come up with to help you through your days with people with severe depression. Um, I honour you and I think you're very, very brave and you should be very proud of yourselves for getting through each day with this condition. But all I'll say to you is if it's uncontrollable and you are literally laying in a world of uncontrolled misery that you just, it's getting worse and worse, you have to go and find someone to help you because you're not going to improve. You won't improve. This kind of tips I'm giving you is when, you know, you've, you've reached out and told people your condition. Don't be embarrassed either. I don't care. It's just, you know, so what if you get depression? It's just like the same as having a cough or a cold. Just get over it. You know, get over it. And this is especially for men as well. We're supposed to be big alpha males, you know, roughy tufty people. Um, it really doesn't matter. That's why I'm so pleased with, like, you know, the soldiers that are now um, 
been becoming more comfortable with actually, um, you know, talking about their PTSD and um, mental health because they're supposed to be the biggest roughy tufty people of our, you know, country. At the end of the day, if there's something wrong up there, then take steps to get it right because you can't put plaster on it, you can't bandage it up, you can't put a plaster cast over it and it'll be ready in six weeks. It is one of the worst conditions, the worst things to go through. So be kind to yourself, love yourself and do things you like to do. Don't force yourself to do anything you don't want to do and reach out to the people that you know will be good support for you and not a drain. You got people coming in draining the crap out of you and they've got their issues and they're not even listening to you. They're the ones you don't want anywhere near you. So self-care, self-preservation, self-love, self-protection. Get yourself a rose quartz, as I've said. I'm not going to go too spirity with this because I've always been going, oh, shut up, I'm just depressed, I don't want to do all that. But just try and find positivity in your life. Even googling positive thoughts for the day you know you might read it and think what a load of old crap but you're still doing something towards trying to care for you and get yourself better anyway i hope this helps you because i'm really tired and i just wanted to say it because so many people god that really kicked something off yesterday with those videos so um hang on in there guys be kind to yourself i felt i sound like jerry springer be kind to yourself and each other just hang on in there, take every day as it comes and try and do those three little things. Three things to be grateful for. One physical challenge, <coughs> one self-love challenge. And if you don't do any of them, it really doesn't matter. But at least I'm sowing the seed that one day you might think, oh, I'm going to give that a go. So I'll leave that with you. Stay strong. And um, I really wish you all the best. And I hope that you get really well as, as well as you can, um, as soon as you can. Okay, my darlings, take care.